organizers for organizing this nice uh, online meeting. So I, I would like to introduce our recent research, uh, which is uh, basically about how to calculate uh, a di the displacement error of the background uh, state estimate based on the observed uh, some observed observations. Uh, and uh, the main point of our of our, of our uh, results is that uh, the displacement the displacement we calculate is uh, physics based, and which is a uh, this this point has been omitted by uh, almost all the methods uh, in the geophysics area. Okay, so now let's look at our uh, see our motivation of this. So suppose we have two uh, state estimate S one and S two, and how do we define the mean of them? So in our linear algorithms, for example, EMKF or whatever. So basically, we define the mean just simply by uh, S1 plus S2 divided by two. So this is the uh, arithmetic mean. But as you see that the, this ensemble mean, this usual ensemble mean is not uh, so uh, good because uh, it destroys the feature. <laughs> the original state has a obvious feature, which is a bright spot, but uh, the arithmetic mean is uh, consists of two uh, spots. So basically this destroys the basic feature uh, optically. Uh, so in mathematics, there is a, uh, uh, another nice definition of the mean, which is called pre-shear mean. It is based on the, uh, it is a, this, this mean is defined for the samples on a Riemann surface, on curved surface. Uh, so here for this S1 and S2, the, um, if uh, we you, uh, here, here I, I need to say something, some uh, term, which is not uh, so, uh, maybe not so familiar to you, uh, called vessel stain distance. Basically, uh, in this case, the pressure means based on vessel stain distance of, of two um, probability of two um, um, density density state. So uh, forget about the uh, mathematical terms. You can see that the pressure mean has a much more reasonable structure. Okay, so it pre preserves the original structure of the state, of the physics state. Okay, let's look, now, look at another example. Suppose this is our um, background, background estimate, the left-hand side, the left, upper left panel is our background estimate. The upper right panel is the, of the, of, is the observed state. Okay, so how do we present the difference? Okay, so our human, we are human being, in our first glance, obviously, okay, the difference is just a displacement, displacement such shift of positions, okay, but in our algorithm, Okay, the difference is uh, uh, is represented by this uh, so y y o minus h x b. Okay, so it's this uh, uh, linear difference. Okay, so again, okay, so this is a, <coughs> a simple example to illustrate that there is some, uh, there might be some deficiency in a current linear algorithm when the physics state has obvious physical features. So how do we, so our goal is to find the algorithm to calculate, to find this error, okay, uh, for given observed state, uh, observed fields and the background estimate field. Okay. okay, so now the different, as I said, that the, this is another interpretation of the difference of the two state. Okay, this, uh, the, this arrow is another interpretation of the, difference of the HXB and the YO. So this new interpretation or this uh, new interpretation of the difference show us, uh, give us another um, kind of nudging method. Okay. So we, uh, we can call it a displacement based nudging. Okay. So simply speaking, the scheme of this um, kind of method can be used in the following three steps. Suppose we have the observed state YO and the background estimate yb and the other background estimate xb okay so we want to compute first we can we calculate a displacement map t from the observed state m and the corresponding background estimate yb so this t is the displacement displacement map so the definition is presented in the following okay <clears throat> so omega is the physical region physical domain that we uh, we we look at and S is a physical field on 
omega, right? So a displacement a displacement map T it is uh, with is a smooth one to one and on to map from omega to omega. So basically, it's a DP, in mathematics we call it a DP morphism. Okay, and also we require that it preserves the boundary of the omega. So basically, it maps the boundary to the boundary. Okay, uh, we do not require that every point in the boundary is fixed. Uh, we only require that the whole boundary is is preserved. So such a map is called this displacement map. And so we want to calculate this this uh, this displacement map, displacement map from the observed state y, and the corresponding uh, background estimate y. Okay, so these two low these two information should give us a map, t, and we need to find the algorithm to do this step. Okay, after we find the t, okay, we this t basically represents the uh, the position arrow of y b. Okay. And here we assume that this uh, the current uh, state is a uh, has a strong physical feature, so that the position arrow of x b and the position arrow of y b, we assume that these two position arrows are strongly correlated. Okay, basically we should uh, we assume that we assume that they are same. So we calculate this uh, this position arrow from y o and y b, and we want to use this t represents the position arrow of y b. Okay. And since we assume that the position arrow of YB is the same as the position arrow of XB, so we can use T to fix, to adjust the position arrow of XB. So therefore, this T sharp uh, means basically it's a symbol, and it's a, it's a gen this symbol is, uh, is abstract here. It means that uh, how to use a low end displacement uh, arrow T to adjust a low end state field YB. Or uh, XB. Okay, so we use T to adjust the YB and we use T to adjust the XB. So we, we get the large the state estimate Y and the large state estimate X. <clears throat> so basically, this is a uh, this is a, a big picture of uh, what we want to do here. Okay, and uh, here we'll present another we we'll present another definition which is called uh, which we call a displacement flow. Okay. So uh, difference, the difference between disp displacement flow and displacement map is that uh, T is a, is a sequence, is a time sequence of uh, displacement map. So T is from uh, zero to epsilon. Epsilon is a very small number. It can be one or 0.5 or whatever, it's a constant. So T is a, a, a smooth map from this time window times omega to the domain omega. Um, we we require that t is smooth and uh, t for each time, t of t is a displacement map, and the when t is equal to zero, so the starting displacement displacement map displacement map is identity. Okay, so you can think that uh, this is this is, this flow start start from the identity map, and as as time moves forward, so this displacement map changes with time. Okay, so this is a uh, Time sequence of displace, displace map, displacement map, and we call it a displacement flow. <clears throat> so now uh, let's re, uh, summary, partially sum, sum, sum up what we have uh, talked about. So but the goal is to adjust or partially adjust the displacement map, a displacement of both observed and unobserved physical state. Uh, and then uh, before we apply data simulation, okay, before before we apply ENKF or 3D var or 4D var. Uh, so what do we, do we need to do? What do we need to finish this goal? Okay, so first we need the algorithm to calculate t. So basically, given uh, the background estimate y and the observed state y, okay, we want to find the algorithm to give us a displacement map t. And also we need an explicit definition of t sharp. So basically, t sharp here is uh, it's just a symbol, and uh, it, represent, it represents how to use the known displacement map to adjust the position arrow of some field, uh, state field. Okay, uh, and uh, our main contribution is actually in this T sharp. Okay, we point, uh, and this the point of this the main point of this talk is that this T sharp should be physics based. <clears throat> 
So how do we find the T? So generally, generally, okay, so it's not hard to get, a, to find a, such a scheme, okay? So look at equation one. <clears throat> we want to find all the displacement map T's. Okay, so here we consider all the possible dis, uh, displacement map T's. Okay, T is from omega to omega smooth, diffuse, uh, one to one and on two. Okay, so it's called the diffuse morphism. We consider all the T's, so, and we, com we compare YO minus T sharp YB. So basically T sharp YB, as we said, T sharp YB means how to adjust YB using T, okay? Therefore T sharp YB is that uh, is adjusted background estimate. So we we compare YO and the adjusted, uh, adjusted background estimate, okay? So basically this re represents uh, the difference between the observed state or basically the true state and the the difference between the uh, observed state and the adjusted background estimate. We want this to be small as small as possible, okay? Uh, or idealistically, we want this to be exactly equal, okay? But we also need a penalty term. Why, why do we need, need a penalty term? This is like a, uh, in a regression method, you, you, you want to prevent yourself from overfitting, okay? So basically this, this penalty term is, is uh, some term which uh, describe the complexity complexity of T. Okay. You do not want T to be very complicated. So you want this to be you want the first term, which is, means the difference between the observed state and the adjusted state. You want this difference to be uh, small. Meanwhile you want T to be as simple as possible. So therefore it's a uh, it's a balance between this uh, first term and the penalty term. You want to find uh, the you, you you check over all the possible t's, and you find the t which give you smallest uh, cost. Uh, the the sum of the two is is the cost of this uh, for the t. <clears throat> okay, so this is a basic. This is a quite a common strategy. Okay, for when we want to uh, find some optimized parameter. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so t here t is a displacement map. Okay, so it's from omega to omega. And this is a global, this is called, sometimes we call it global solution because, uh, uh, because uh, we, we call it global solution because uh, this T is, uh, um, uh, this T is far from the, far away from the identity, okay, so, but it, actually this is not easy to solve, okay, the problem why it's not easy to solve. <clears throat> so, so instead we get a suboptimal solution, uh, so using a gradient descent method, Okay, look at this second equation. What does it mean? Um, we we start from uh, suppose we have the we have the displaced we have we have displacement flow okay from zero to t okay from zero to small t okay now we want to know how do we change the displace display uh, displacement map in the next few times time step. So basically, you can see that we compose this i is identity map, and mu mu is a is a is a is a variable. Okay, it's a, we want to take the limit. Okay, I uh, know we want to take the partial derivative of this thing uh, with respect with with respect to mu when for mu equal to zero. Sorry, this is should be mu equal to zero. <clears throat> uh, so basically, this t. This capital T of T is known. We, we assume it's known, and we want to know how. So we have the time. We have the dis, displacement flow from uh, for T equal to zero from T equal to zero to T equal to T, and we want to know how does this displacement flow changes for the next uh, uh, few time small time step. So we check over all the possible vector field, uh, v, v of T in case. So V of T is a vector field. So we consider all the possibilities for V of T. So basically I plus mu times V of T composed with capital T of T. This thing, this whole thing, okay, it represents all the possible uh, displacement map for the next uh, uh, mu, for the next mu, uh, mu time. Um, so we, we want this Y O to be the observed state to be as close as possible to the to the adjusted uh, background estimate yb okay so we want to find all the post all the we'll check all the uh, vector fields so that this uh, 
so that this uh, um, this uh, background estimate, when it's, when it is adjusted by this uh, along the vector field v, okay, so is the, so the difference decrease as fast as possible, okay. So this therefore this is called a gradient descent descent method. So well, uh, so this basically this v of t is a vector field, and it, it tell us, uh, and we will <clears throat> we will solve this v of t for 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 a long time window, and uh, all of this vector field composes or consists consists the displacement flow. Okay. So now, three minute warning. Three minutes left. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so now. Our contribution of this uh, of this research is that uh, first we, we point out that the T sharp should be based on the face of the physics of the state variable y in all the methods, and then with uh, tools in differential geometry. So we use uh, uh, some mathematical tools to formulate T sharp, and for a certain class of uh, state variables, not all the variables. <laughs> and then we've showed the existence and uniqueness of the solution for the optimization problem. So basically, it's problem two. Okay. And for for omega with or without boundary. So, the second part, the second part, the second point, and third, third point is basically mathematics. The first point is the most important. We, uh, T sharp must be physics based. So there are some there are already some methods in the geophysics. For example, the field field alignment. Okay. So basically, you can see that they want to find a, a, a map displacement map T and the analyzed state analysis state X A. Okay, based on this uh, uh, cost function. Okay, if you look at the real term, real term is the, so basically compares the observed state y and the adjusted uh, analysis state. Okay, so they want they want this to be small as possible. Okay, but so is this here x a compose t basically it is the, the how you how you use a displacement map to adjust uh, to adjust the state x a. So basically, this is their T sharp. Uh, they use this same T sharp for all the state variables, and this is we think uh, is not uh, right. And similarly for the more of the EMKF. Okay, so this is two thousand seven method. You can see that uh, they have the same uh, problem. So they this is their Y B composed T. So the the state composed with the displacement map is their T sharp, and this is not. Um, this is used for all the state variable. Uh, same, uh, the same as the field alignment, this is not right. <clears throat> and so, uh, in the re recent research, okay, called optimal transport based DA, okay, and the, the, this method is designed for positive uh, fields, which has a mass conservation property, okay. And this is because optimal transport theory is a uh, is is only is only um, is a theory for such kind of fields, okay. And for other kind of fields, this is this pro uh, this uh, method is uh, uh, optimal transport theory cannot be applied to those kind of field, cannot be applied to other kind of fields. So um, again, so this method also has a limitation. Okay. There are some other methods uh, other other methods in other areas because of time we cannot go through all of them. Okay. And um, how do we? So I go. I I go directly go to the main point. Okay. So. So our. Uh, so how do we define the T sharp? How do we define the T sharp? So suppose S is a physical field, and T sharp S is defined in the following way. Okay. So we first associate S to a differential form or tensor field, omega S, okay. And then we calculate T, the pull bank of omega S. The pull, the pull bank is a, the differential form is a, is a mathematical thing in, uh, in differential geometry. And so that, so is the pull bank map, okay. We can choose the pull bank of this differential form, okay. So this is a, give us a new differential form. This, and this new differential form give us a new state a physical field T sharp, so you can see that this is purely mathematical. It's not physics, and we'll explain why it is, why this is related to physics. Okay. So, 
And let's look at an example of T-sharp. Okay. So suppose you have a two-dimensional domain omega and a two-dimensional vector field S. Uh, so basically vector field, winner field UV, so it has two components. And uh, first we define this differential form. So omega S is U dx plus V dy. Okay, so this is differential form. So the pull bank of, of omega S is the following. Okay, so you can see it's a, it's a, it's a, it's very different from the direct composition. Okay, so composition times a partial derivative state. Okay. So S T sharp S give us um, is defined by the uh, by the uh, as a, the two components of T of the pullback of omega S. Okay. So this is our new uh, U and the new V. The good part of this T sharp, why do we need this T sharp is that uh, it conserves the vorticity. Okay. So the new vorticity, the new com the new total vorticity over the domain is the same as the uh, total vorticity uh, of the original field. And this this uh, equation I holds for all the diffeomorphism T's. Okay, we do not have we do not have a regularization term to force them to equal. Okay. For all diffeomorphism, for one, for all the one-to-one -one map, one-to-one -one and onto map, and smooth map T, okay, this equation I hold. So this is a good, this is a good thing because uh, this this says that if we, if we adjust the state variables in this way, okay, using this T sharp, the vorticity will be automatically conserved. So you will not have a weird vorticity. Um, so the next question is how do we choose choose the differential form, form omega s? Okay, so suppose we have some state variable s. How do we choose the differential form of omega s? So here we have two rules. Okay, first is that uh, we can choose omega s based on the conservation law of the system, and second is that we can based on we can choose omega s based on the transport equation of s. And here is uh, that our our theorem we we proved uh, we present this theorem uh, in our papers so that we so the existence and uniqueness of the solution is guaranteed. So now how do we find the how do we find the t k okay. so so this is a this is a complete uh, a more detailed description of the of the this. Of, 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 of the algorithm, how to find the TK. Okay. So, so first we, <clears throat> we since this T is is a this T is compo is a displacement displacement flow. Okay, we we want to find the um, uh, we first solve the vector field v one to v n. Okay, and each v i is ba is solved based on the equation ten and equation eleven. So basically. On we solve the vector field based on this equation two. Okay, using this equation two. Okay, and then the final displacement flow is the composition of all these uh, vector fields. Okay, so now for the displacement displacement based margin. So for So we for, for given given the observed state y and background estimate y and the other background estimate x b, um, we first determine the corresponding differential form or tensor fields omega o, omega b, and omega x. As this dif this uh, differential forms are determined by the conservation laws of the quantities and the transport equations of the corresponding state variables. Um, we obtain we obtain the dif the vector fields, um, it, it, iterative iteratively. Okay, based on the cost function we, pre we proposed, and we use the we use the vector fields to morph to to adjust the uh, background estimate uh, omega b and the, the omega x by a small time step mu. Okay, so we we do this iteratively each each time we adjust we find the optimal uh, vector field and we morph the field. The state variable along this uh, vector field 
for a very small time step. So we do this iteratively. So, at the, so, um, <clears throat> and eventually we uh, we get a new omega b and omega x, and we can get the new morphed background estimate from these two uh, morphed dif uh, differential forms. Um, Yitri, could you wrap up your talk because we need to uh, move on to the next presentation soon? Ah, uh, sure. <clears throat> Okay. Um, so okay. So a basic interpretation of this uh, of this uh, a pullback map is the following. Okay. So let's uh, do, go through this quickly. So if your state variable s satisfies this transport equation, okay. So first, uh, the left hand side is a transport equation, and the right hand side is a source term. Uh, all the other terms. And so you, based on this transport equation, it means that omega s must be equal to this. A differential n form. So why is it? Because why do we choose this differential n form? Because if you choose this differential n form, then uh, look at this. Look at equation uh, fourteen. Okay. So this if if you if you change if you move your state s zero along the vector field v. Okay. For for small time step, you. Uh, uh, using using our um, uh, using our uh, T sharp law, so you get this mu S mu. This S mu is the same as uh, you evolve the state along equation twelve uh, with zero terms on the right hand side. You evolve equation twelve on, uh, for time for small time step mu. Okay, you get S mu. So this is uh, this S mu must be equal to the right hand side of equation fourteen. Equa the right hand side of equation fourteen is how we evolve S using our T sharp law. So, so therefore, uh, so therefore, we call this is a physics space, space. Okay. So basically, you choose the differential forms based on the transport equation. This is uh, what we mean. What we want to say. Finally, we use a numerical model to 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 check whether our method is efficiency or efficient or not. So we use the thermal shallow water equation. It has three state variables. H is uh, h is water height and the buoyancy and the Velocity field on a two-dimensional domain. So you can see that. Uh, so if you if you do not consider T sharp, can you can see that the morphed state will have a singularity here. Okay. So the the left panel on the the left panel on the on the left sorry the middle panel on the left column. You will see two singularity here. So this is how you when you move your state without considering a uh, carefully defined uh, T sharp. So now we compare. We, we look at the EMKF result. Okay. <clears throat> the middle row is you apply EMKF directly to the state. Okay. And the last row is that you first uh, you you do a displacement based on lodging and then you apply EMKF. So you can see the structure is much preserved by by the displacement displacement based lodging. So now the summary. Okay. So the most important point here is that the T sharp should be based on the fix or the state variable y. So in all the methods, uh, although there are some other methods, uh, the other methods in field in 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 physics like the field alignment and the mob EMKF or others, those methods they do not consider they do not consider the same cost function, but T sharp must be used in their method. So and but in all these methods, T sharp is omitted. Okay, they, do, they did not realize that T sharp must be physics based. And secondly, we uh, we use some mathematical tools to to formulate the T sharp. So this is uh, uh, also a nice result, and we showed the uh, existence and uniqueness of solution. Uh, however, not every state variable should be associated to a, a different differential form. <clears throat> in general, okay. In general, this suppose your your x is some fundamental state variable. Okay, if s is equal to f of x. Like a, uh, then T sharp should be based on this F model, this uh, this forward model, and the uh, and the uh, differential forms uh, based on X. So the result we present here is based on the submitted preprint uh, listing here. Okay, so thanks for listening. Thank you, Yichun, for your presentation. And um, we're a bit over time, so we have to move on.